Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Dave's Math Channel. I'm your host, David Tear, and today I'm going to do a continuation with the chess theme. Last time I talked about the eight queens problem, which is a classic chess problem. There's another classic uh, chess problem in math known as a Knight's Tour problem. And um, so anyway, let's begin. So uh, what is a Knight's Tour? Well, I think you guys all know how a chess knight moves. Uh, you know, it moves one square in one direction, two squares in a perpendicular direction. So the question is, if you just put a knight on a chessboard, is it possible for the knight to visit every square of the chessboard by making legal knight moves and not um, retrace any of its squares? Like, have uh, 64 moves, there's 63 moves, and visit all 64 squares without revisiting any squares. And there's a lot of other questions we could ask. If it's possible, then how many such nights tours are there? And also, uh, are any of them closed? Meaning, do you ever get back to the same position you can you started at? Um, so there's both open and closed nights tours. And then what about if you change the size of the chessboard or the dimensions of the chessboard? So these are all different kinds of questions we can ask about nights tours. And uh, on the, on the cover slide, I showed you an example of one. So I think you guys know that the answer is yes, there are Knight's Tours. As a matter of fact, this picture shows a closed Knight's Tour. So not only are there Knight's Tours, but there's closed Knight's Tours, which is nice. Uh, so then uh, the next question, I guess, becomes uh, um, how many of them uh, are there and how can we find them? Well, let's first talk about how many of them there are. There's a lot. I mean, he, this this uh, table here shows the number of uh, um, so in in the first column. Well, in the first column is just the size of the chessboard n by n, and n equals one through uh, uh, three are trivial. Well, what one is trivial? One just means that you know the the chess knight can't move. If it's on a one by one board, there's only one square, and of course that is a possible knight square, but it's a trivial one. It's just one where the knight sits there, doesn't do anything. So we don't really care about that one. And I think it's pretty easy to see there's no two by two open or closed night stores because a night move involves moving two squares, which means a two by two board is not big enough for it to move. So it's no surprise there's no night stores for two by two. Turns out there's no night stores for three by three or four by four either. Um, but for five by five, there are open. It turns out five by five is kind of the first non-trivial interesting case because it turns out that there are 1,728 uh, possible uh, Knights Tours on a 5x5 board. They're all open, it turns out. There's no closed Knight Tours on a 5x5 board. Actually, it's pretty easy to prove that there's no closed Knight Tours on an N by N uh, board where N is odd. And that's pretty easy to see because uh, if you look at like how many... Uh, if you if you look at the color of the squares, one thing about a knight is that it, it, the the color of the square, black or white, has to alternate on each move because it's moving two over and one you know two in one direction, one another direction. That's a total of three uh, distance three in the Manhattan uh, uh, metric, which uh, and each move in the Manhattan metric will switch the color. So you're switching it three times, so it has to alternate. And uh, on a, a n by n where n is odd, there's a total of n squared moves. And the square's odd, so that means the color is going to have to switch at the end, which is impossible because it has to end up on the same square it started at. So that, that completes the proof that there's no closed uh, n by uh, closed nights tours on a on a, a chessboard of n by n when n is odd. But the first non-trivial case that does give you closed nights tours is n equals six. And it turns out for that case, there's a total of 9,862. These numbers grow very, very fast. So there's, not, there's already 9,862 possible closed nights tours for a 6 by 6 board. That's the that's smallest non-trivial case. And the total number of uh, open and closed is already in the millions. It's over 6 million. So these numbers get very, very big. And you'd think since they're so big that these things would be really, really easy to find. Actually, they're not. Uh, look at the numbers for 8x8. Eight eight. That's a standard board. You're already in the trillions, th over 13 trillion for just closed. There's, there's over 13 trillion 
closed knights eight by, knights tours on a standard chessboard, and there's over nineteen quadrillion of them. Uh, if you don't care about them being closed, open or closed, so they should be pretty easy to find. But actually, they're not. And the reason I guess they're not is because the number of possible paths a knight could take is even bigger than these numbers. I mean, we're talking about 64 squares on a chessboard, and knight has a lot of possibilities for each move. I mean, up to eight possibilities for each move. So so kind of an upper bound on the number of possible paths of a knight is like 8 to the 64th power. That's 2 to the 192. That's only like 60 digits. That's much, much larger than these numbers on this table. So they're not that easy to find unless you know a clever method. And uh, there is a nice method for finding these. It's, and it involves a heuristic known as Warnsdorf heuristic. And the Warnsdorf heuristic is actually a very simple thing. All it is, is the number of possible um, uh, ways a knight can move from this particular square on the board. And it's biggest in the middle of the board. I think you'll notice that the 16 squares in the middle of the board, it's eight. That means that there's eight possible squares a knight can move from to from any of those uh, 16 squares in the middle. That's pretty easy to see. can move in any one of eight possible directions that it could ordinarily move. But when you get close to the edge, it can't move past the edge, so the numbers go down. So, um, you know, if you're in the corner, there's only two ways you can move. You have to move out of the corner. There's only two ways to do that. So uh, those are the most, the, the lowest numbers. Uh, and you can see that, you know, I mean, rows on the edge, the numbers are smallest. Second from the edge, they're a little bit bigger. And, you know, right here, three or more from the edge are eight. So anyway, that's the Warnsdorf heuristic. And why do we care about that? Because there's a rule that Warnsdorf came up with for finding these knights tours. And the rule is that you always want to move the knight to the um, square that has the lowest possible value of the Warnsdorf heuristic. And here's an example. And I should also tell you, the Warnsdorf heuristic changes as you're moving a knight across the board. I mean, you have to take into account all the places knight's already been. So the the the, the, the Warnsdorf heuristic, it actually changes, you know, it, it goes down as the knight is moving along the board. It, it's the number of possible squares the, the knight can move to from that particular square. In this particular example, you see that the lowest value of the Warnsdorf heuristic here is two. That's for uh, you know the, the, I guess a two on this on this picture. Well, it should be three otherwise, but I guess since the knight's already visited the square it's on and before there's only two possible places it can move once it goes there. That's to I guess uh, c three or c one. So uh, so the next place you want to move the knight is to A2. You always move it to the square that has the lowest possible value of a Warnsdorf heuristic. And if you do that, I think you're almost guaranteed to, to complete the Knight's Tour. It might not be a closed Knight's Tour when you do it, but you will make a Knight's Tour, I'm pretty sure. If you don't, you can always backtrack. Uh, I talked about backtracking when I was talking about the Eight Queens problem last time. You might have to backtrack. Sometimes I think you do. But it's not hard to find these knights tours if you follow the Warnsdorf heuristic. That's the trick. And it's pretty easy to write a computer program to do this. I did this a long time ago. And there's lots and lots of these knights tours. Some of them are closed. And that's a clever thing you can do since these things are so easy to find using the Warnsdorf heuristic. Uh, you don't have to backtrack very much. You can do it several thousand times until you get a closed nights tour. So, and that doesn't take long either. So it's easy to generate closed nights tours. Uh, like I said, there's a lot of them and computers are very fast. And here's a, here's an example of a closed nights tour you can generate, I guess, starting from e either of these two squares where the night is shown, I guess, uh, C, C8 or C7, either of those will generate this beautiful uh, closed nights tour here using the Warnsdorf heuristic. So anyway, that's how you find closed nights tours. And uh, uh, if you wanted to find all of them, I don't know how people found these numbers in this table, by the way, uh, these huge, huge numbers. They, I'm sure they had to do backtracking, but they probably had to also use a supercomputer to get these huge numbers or else run this thing for a really, really long time or maybe 
do parallel processing. I don't know how they were able to find all 19 quadrillion uh, possible knights to a son an 8 by 4 That kind of boggles my mind. Uh, but anyway, they did. And I don't think this is known for very many large. It might, I think 8 by 8 is the largest it's known for, by the way, since these numbers are so big. But anyway, that, that completes my talk for today on, on Knight's Tours. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. Long live math, and I'll see you next time.